Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Dr. Mithri Shankar, and she is broadcasting all the way from India. Please welcome her to the show. It's so nice to meet you. Hi, Chef AJ. Nice to be on your show, and a warm hello to all of our viewers from here, Bangalore, South India. Bangalore means Bendakaluru in Kannada, that's our local language. It's the city of boiled seeds or pulses, if you will. It's the garden city. We love plants and trees here. And the story goes that the warrior king here, while on a quest to expand his kingdom, got lost and came to this area, which has now grown into Bangalore. He knocked on the door of this old woman who offered him some boiled beans to eat. And therefore, he established a city called it Bendakaluru. These are the relics. I hope you can see the slides. Uh, these, these are the relics and the stone carvings here depicting the same. These are Sutti Lilva beans, Avrekalu. They belong to the flat bean family, the Hyacinth bean. So uh, today in my presentation, I will uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, nuclear medicine just to orient you. Uh, what we will be covering today is uh, nuclear medicine. I'm, I'm a nuclear medicine physician. That, that's what I do on my uh, weekday job. And uh, also try to share with you some of my uh, weekend or hobby projects and how both of them have come together, connecting me to the core subject of interest here, lifestyle, particularly food. Um, so nuclear medicine is basically functional imaging. It is beyond what meets the eye. We, we look at things which normal images like radiology, uh, CT scan or MR cannot show or see. It's a specialty where it's a combination of both diagnostic aspects of radiology, cardiology, and therapeutic aspects of endocrinology and oncology, if you will. And most of the cases that we see are doctor referrals. They are, they are specialty referrals. And uh, not so frequently, the patient uh, approaches us uh, directly. They usually come with a prescription or uh, a, a, a test or uh, some kind of a referral. Uh, we need special licenses to acquire these radioisotopes, which, uh, we, which are administered into the body. You can see in this little picture here. And the isotopes are very organ specific. They go and stick to the organs we are trying to image, be it the heart, be it the kidney, be it uh, you know, uh, any, any organ at a very cellular level. So you can image the body and look at the function of the cells. And uh, uh, it's not just the size or the shape or the texture. We look at each different phase. Um, for example, this, this is a renal scan, a kidney scan, and we have different isotopes, uh, DPPA or DMSA or MAC3, which all look at different aspects of function of one single kidney cell, which is the nephron. It looks at, one looks at the tubular function, the other at the perfusion, the other at the extraction, and then the uh, excretory function, so on and so forth. So for example, normally in a CT scan, two kidneys might look alike in size or shape. However, on the, on the isotope scans, there are mild differences in function, which could make decisions like which kidney to keep in, inter, in, in times of, you know, in cases like renal transplant and such, which, which one do we keep and which one do we donate, things, things like that. Uh, we do thyroid scans, again, allows us to differentiate between thyroiditis, autoimmune, or infection or Graves' disease. We do a DOPA scan uh, for Parkinson's and we do uh, brain scans, FDT scans, which uh, diagnose uh, Alzheimer's, uh, parathyroid scans, if, if the calcium levels are missed. Again, all these are very organ uh, specific. This is a PET CT scan, um, which, which, which forms the bulk of my practice. Uh, mainly uses uh, glucose analog, FTG, that's a glucose analog. It kind of mimics glucose and goes everywhere glucose would go in the body, particularly cancer. It, it, it's utilized at a higher rate in cancer cells. And uh, so these scans mainly look for cancer spread. And here we have a patient, uh, a lady, uh, we are looking at a 64-year-old uh, you know, lymphoma case. 
And not only can we measure the size, we can also quantify the amount of glucose in it. So the SUV here was 25 and multiple masses. The left on the picture on the left is before treatment, the picture on the right is after treatment. And there was no surgery here. And you can see how well the chemotherapy has worked and almost completely disappeared after treatment. Uh, similarly, more scans, one showing staging of cancer. Uh, both the cases here on the left is the lung and the right is the breast cancer. Both of them have not spread to the local lymph nodes or there is no distant metastasis. So surgery or chemo would be the most likely uh, management uh, pathway. Um, again, here we have more images to show the cancer cells crossing the margins or of uh, the skin or the bone. So uh, basically, we look at aspects which cannot be seen otherwise. In, in the OT table, they can localize uh, lymph nodes. Uh, we actually have a mini kitchen. It's called the hot lab, uh, where we mix food sometimes with different isotopes. And there is truly a deep rooted connection to food and functions of the body in nuclear medicine. We do gastric emptying studies, which come up with different graphs for solid foods uh, on a liquid meal. We look at GR reflex into the esophagus, and uh, DEXA scans essentially show us the uh, resting metabolic rate, the body composition, the body density. Uh, we look at hidden fat or visceral fat. Uh, we look at uh, arthritis or you know, be it uh, single joint or uh, multiple joints involved, um, stuff like that. So a brown fat, I think you've, you've heard about this concept, uh, brown fat, uh, Chef AJ, are you, are you familiar? Yes, I have. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, the, it's the more deleterious kind, correct? Yeah, yeah. So this was more of a recent discovery when, when I was in my residency years. This was about 25 years ago. We would look at all these uh, scans and we really didn't know what was happening. I think it was in about uh, 2003, uh, this was discovered um, and... Uh, uh, the basis being they, they are rich in uh, mitochondria, iron-rich mitochondria, and they play a very important role in body temperature maintenance. So it's almost like a hibernating land, and it wakes up when the body temperature begins to fall. Uh, in, in a way, they can actually help you lose weight, a trivial amount, uh, you know, via the adiponectin uh, activation, which is again found in higher concentration. Um, they, they, they talk about this in the Blue Zones uh, project as well. So exposure to cold, increased uh, levels of uh, irisin, which again improves uh, sensitivity of the scan. So we, we also see this when patients are shivering or they are too cold, uh, these kind of things. It's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, uh, it's almost like uh, uh, they also help eliminate toxins. So um, there are both, there's the white fat and the brown fat, and the brown fat gets picked up on the PET scan. Uh, we do these special heart scans, which show the blood flow to the heart at stress and at stress typically the exercise. It could be physical exercise, or it could be uh, a pharmacological kind where uh, we give special medications, which does the same thing exercise due to the dust to the heart. Uh, typically done for surgical clearance or uh, risk stratification of, for medications and such. Um, so, um, and this, this is one of the uh, brochures or the uh, PDF downloads on the WHO website. Um, it classifies PET CT scans and uh, SPECT scans as number one and number two in, in under cardiovascular disease. And these are not in an alphabetical order. So these are the kind of scans we do. So coming to uh, disease reversal, this is not a new concept, at least to me. I want to show you these two books by uh, Dr. Lance Gold. Um, this was returned, and he gave me these two copies personally when I went to visit him in uh, University of Texas. We, uh, we were, we were, we were uh, I was practicing with the cardiology group in Lancaster, California. And we decided to purchase this scanner from, uh, from him uh, because we, 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 we didn't have uh, uh, enough money to buy a brand new one, but the university was trying to uh, uh, you know, upgrade their machine and the old one was for sale. So this is when I went and met him and we eventually ended up buying the scanner, which has been a part of uh, the legendary Ornish Heart Trials. 
Um, I, I never really knew I was going to be a part of this uh, historic moment in medicine, even though very much in the periphery. But uh, uh, when, when we started doing this, uh, uh, Dr. Daniel Berman from Sudarsan and I came down to visit us and we had arranged for a talk for the other colleagues. And then he was congratulating me and little did I comprehend the enormity of what I was doing until the media decided to cover me. So here's a little uh, thing from 2003 from Antelope Valley Press, where um, I was the first person as a doc uh, a first doctor in California to apply for a license for Rubidium in a private setting setup. Uh, Stanford and UCLA were already doing this into this, but as a private uh, person, I was the uh, first one. Um, also, we started getting these kind of uh, emails in, 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 uh, in the mail. Uh, they, people thought it was uh, something to do with pets, uh, so your cats and dogs and horses or something like that. So um, I, I still get these news, newsletters and it's been enlightening to learn all about these products in the animal industry. Did, did you know this cage is not, it's not, you're not supposed to call it a cage, it's, it's a bird habitat in California. So uh, people thought we were uh, doing uh, something with their pets. Um, and another mentor, uh, Dr. B.M. Hegde, uh, he was the Dean of the Medical College where I graduated from in 1995. And uh, this is a book every doctor should read. The, the book goes, what doctors don't get to study in medical school. I'm, I'm happy and humbled that he will be endorsing the book that I'm writing right now, uh, but another, uh, another people's doctor, if you will. So moving on to the work I'm kind of doing, uh, this, this slide I think kind of summarizes it. It's the story of the Chinese men. Each person has a different perspective. Specialists sometimes are like that. We all look at the disease with our own uh, views and uh, perspectives. And uh, being in nuclear medicine, it gives us, uh, it kind of puts us in a unique position to get a flavor of all the different specialties. And discuss the cases and be involved in different management plans of all these specialties and super specialities. Uh, not only specialists, different corporate hospitals too. In, in, in the setting here in Bangalore, we've done a lot of programs on different themes art, sport, old men, strong women, food, etc. Uh, we hosted the Women Leaders Roundtable October 2011. Um, many women leaders from different fields, lawyers, educators, journalists, media, chartered accountants, a lot of scientists uh, were participants to that. We did another uh, program on art and health, uh, just showing, showing amalgamation of the left brain versus the right brain, uh, uh, where we had a lot of senior artists come and perform, supporting the cause. Uh, predominantly, all of our programs have been on creating awareness and education. This is a particular favorite of mine, and I wanted to share these pictures with you. Uh, it, it's a fashion show with all women uh, dressed in white, saris in different styles with health messages. Uh, you can see the hats and purses were made with fruits and vegetables dangling, and the skirts with letters and food packaging of healthy foods. Uh, sports medicine doctors are showing some fitness demos here. And the dermatologist went around spraying suntan lotion on the audience and gynecologists and uh, orthopedic surgeons were uh, wearing uh, jewelry made from prosthesis and all the medical nuts and screws they use on the OT table. I don't know if the pictures are big enough for you to see, but uh, it was really fun uh, coordinating. Dr. Prasita Bateja, she, she is a gynecologist and she's wearing the uh, hip prosthesis and the nut on her necklace. Uh, that's a Miss India with the diet slogan. Uh, she's wearing the uh, head of the femur, if you will. Uh, the, I don't know if I can point it out, but there's, there's one there and there's one here. So it was really fun uh, getting people involved. Um, I've been representing the foundation. I was on the Asia Pacific board for a couple of years, once in Tokyo, once in Singapore. That's the longest one can be. And uh, they also invited me to speak on the World Congress in Rome once, where I, that's where I got to learn where the uh, gladiators at the Colosseum were uh, vegetarian. And then this happened. Long story short, I was diagnosed with diabetes myself, and I began to see the common denominator of all these conditions I've been working uh, all my life, be it heart disease, osteoporosis, cancer, diabetes, all of that was lifestyle. 
And most likely, most of most common reason most of our loved ones die is because of heart disease. Sixty two percent of cancer we see is only in stage three or four. Majority of the diabetics are overweight or obese. Bones break, hip fractures because they weren't taken care of. So uh, that, that kind of started to uh, you know uh, make it very evident to me and. Uh, uh, my personal journey and my professional journey, that's when uh, the common denominator came down to lifestyle. Um, Dr. Ornish in one of the conferences was saying that he, he was learning yoga from a guru and someone asked him, are, are you becoming a Hindu? Um, he said, no, I'm, I'm an Andu. Uh, so uh, that, 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 that's the name of his book, right? So that, that's when a bell rang. And then to me, to me I'm, I'm a Hindu and I'm an Andu after reading his book. Um, and I'm, I'm a Brahmin, and I was raised in a very strict South Indian uh, kind of a family. And there's a new concept. I'm not sure if you've heard of it before. It's, it's the Madi Maili Gay Musre concept. It's in Canada. Basically, these are concepts which uh, my contemporary colleagues in, in the US when I was doing residency would never really understand. Um, we, we would do long, long calls, long nights, uh, early in the morning, there's hardly any vegetarian choices, right? I mean, uh, other than vanilla ice cream and french fries, very few vegetarian items in the hospital uh, cafeteria. Uh, so the, my colleagues would kind of uh, dig into my uh, food with, with their own uh, spoons or forks, which are touched by their spit. And that, that's the concept I'm, I'm talking about. Uh, this doesn't that exist in the Western, does it? I mean, if, if you have touched the spoon and somebody else is going to be using it, is that an okay thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. uh, yeah. So that that's not okay. That's that's ne that's never considered okay in in in, in the Indian uh, context or the way we were brought up. Uh, that's called like the angel, and even even if you're eating in a in an area where uh, food has spilled, or uh, even when our cooks come in to cook for us, they're expected to take a bath, wear clean clothes, sometimes wet clothes dipped in hot water. Uh, even today, on special occasions, the priests will not eat the food if it is not prepared in this meticulous way. Uh, it's called the muddy way, uh, muddy way. And now we have all this uh, data about the gut microbiota and, you know, it, it kind of makes, makes sense, both of that uh, coming together. And uh, the circles in this ikigai, are you familiar with this, Dr. Shifeji? So can I skip this? Ikigai? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all the circles now to me mean, uh, you know, the vegetables and the fruits and the fats. And that, that's how I'm beginning to see these circles where, uh, ikigai in, in it's a Japanese concept of uh, wrestling, to having a direction or purpose in life and providing a sense of fulfillment towards uh, which you want to, want to take actions. And that's kind of uh, the meaning we have founded uh, the, the Green Foundation India, which I'll, I'll talk about in a bit. And the puzzles of the geometry again somehow fall, fell into place in my mind. The pyramid of uh, Maslow's the hierarchy of needs, which again depicts uh, magnanimity, the virtue of the wealthy or abundant, and you can only give when when one your when you, uh, and that cup now needs to be filled with fruits and vegetables. So uh, so uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, and, but I was the doctor now who's now been asking people to eat apples and keep the meat away, I guess. So this, this is our organic garden. It thrives as a foundation initiative. The uh, Green Foundation India, we do a lot of community-based uh, programs here, promoting eco-friendly, sustainable uh, living practices, uh, garden arts and horticultural therapies, working mainly on four verticals, uh, awareness, education, advocacy, and uh, research. Um, more, it kind of started more of a weekend project. Uh, the foundation was uh, set up uh, with the cash prize, My Garden One about a lakh uh, rupees. And uh, mainly we have been trying to uh, have different talks, multi-panel uh, discussions on topics of environmental pollution, uh, particularly how it affects health, urban uh, ecosystems, animals being a big part of it, not as food, but as in coexistence. Uh, food, uh, carcinogens, adaptations, uh, GMO, organic, etc. Um, trying to get the uh, local authorities involved, the horticultural uh, department director, the secretary of state pollution uh, board, uh, politicians, professors from agricultural universities, etc. They've been part of these programs. 
Uh, most of the programs are community based and they're free. Uh, sometimes a nominal, uh, nominally priced to cover the cost of the materials used uh, in all these different uh, topics. Uh, but they all have one thing in common. They all are focused on the sustainable goals of uh, UN, goal 311, 13, 15, and uh, 17. Um, we've had a lot of animal friendly activities. We did some training classes for the dogs with special needs. Uh, for sensory motor integration, uh, building a birdhouse workshop for children, uh, sparrows, these are birds which have become now extinct, kind of becoming very rare in, in at least in the city of Bangalore here, and different birds have different types of nests, so we had these uh, bird specialists come in and uh, teach the kids how to make different uh, birdhouses and stuff. Uh, there's always been a bee human conflict in urban habitats. So we've had a few workshops on beekeeping and education. Um, there are special species of honeybees uh, specific to India. Uh, we've had a chance to work with the Indian cows. Uh, there is something called the Jivamruta. It's, it's a microbial concoction uh, used from cow dung, basically bullshit. Uh, and uh, it, it kind of feeds the soil microbiota. It's, you know, bottled into recycled uh, pet bottles and sold in our garden uh, groups. And all the proceeds go back to the temple which ha housed these cows in, in their goshala, which is basically a cow house within the premises of the community congregations and uh, worship. Uh, and uh, um, that's, that's, that's my garden, some flowers from my garden. Uh, David uh, Rogers uh, was, was a researcher in uh, Barcelona Institute for uh, Global Health and uh, Colorado State University, the lead author of the study, which was published in uh, Lancet uh, Planet Health in collaboration with the uh, World Health Organization. Specifically, the research team found that for every 10% increase in vegetation that's within 16,000 square feet of your house, your probability of death drops by 4%. So uh, these are, again, some colorful pictures I wanted to share. Um, horticultural therapy, that's a new concept. Forest bathing has uh, entered the spotlight in a nature-oriented uh, therapy uh, way. Uh, some doctors are writing uh, past prescriptions, and it's kind of a very spiritual practice uh, to do. Uh, in India, Devarakadu, in Karnataka especially, these are, that, that's a concept where there are special areas of forest, small areas of uh, forests which are cultivated to nurture wild and natural plants and herbs to grow. Um, almost every house or every small farm, they have these tiny, tiny areas. It's called uh, Devarakadu. Um, so that's something I wanted to mention. Um, this is an aerial view of uh, the green hub. That, that's my, uh, that's our foundation and that's the garden. Um, what you can see here are little things I wanted to mention is the uh, river rock bed, which acts as a acupressure kinesthetic walk when you walk on that uh, barefoot. We have a little basketball uh, court, uh, basketball court uh, with uh, the brick markings as per standard dimensions, which again, multi-purpose is for exercises, lunges, kicks, uh, etc. cetera, with, with my personal trainer. And some different steps have different heights and this yoga space will, and also the open air uh, room there, that, that, that could be an, uh, where, where I would do consultations or group sessions, that, that's what is once, once Corona and things uh, open up. Uh, horticultural therapy, we've done some workshops uh, for these kind of fairy gardens during the festival uh, Dasara. It's, it's almost uh, uh, falls during the fall break, I think. And uh, it's a festival just like in Christmas, uh, you know, the Indian homes, they display a lot of dolls and toys. And this was one way to bring the greens indoors and decorated with little cute uh, uh, fairy thingies. Uh, for children to participate and uh, put it on their uh, shelves during the display. Um, we've had workshops on hydroponics, uh, kokedama, bonsai, microgreens. Uh, kokedama are essentially, again, Japanese. These are hanging gardens. They have uh, a compressed uh, root system. Um, we did, uh, I, I love this photograph. My husband took that picture. You can actually see the water bubble on the microgreen leaves. Um, we use terracotta containers, trying to avoid plastic. 
um, and uh, clay modeling is that again for the Ganesha festival, again, eco-friendly, avoiding the pains and the burden to the lakes, which that would bring. So Ganesha festival, it comes typically after the monsoon. So generally the rivers are polluted due to heavy rains. And uh, these idols are worshipped with 21 different varieties of herbs, uh, with some with some medicinal properties. And they're immersed into the rivers or water, which also has a purifying effect. So uh, these are workshops where kids with the parent, it's like a mother and child thing, they could come and learn and do this. Um, we've had a lot of other workshops like summer camp, photography sessions for kids, uh, uh, you know, uh, organic, uh, uh, what organic soap making. Uh, art therapy sessions where you can grow plants, recycling bottles, broken pots, uh, so on and so forth. Um, again, recycled wood into birdhouses, tiles and mirrors into mosaic art, wines into wheat. Uh, we've partnered with other like-minded organizations and schools, made and distributed seed balls. Uh, research also now shows that folks who have pets and get their hands dirty in soil have, have a better immune system and a healthier uh, microbiota. Uh, we've done the OPUS one pot one shot uh, cooking workshop. Um, again, doing jewelry with uh, terracotta or clay, handmade soaps, creams, uh, lipsticks with organic colors, colors using you know, beetroot juice or um, chocolate or things, stuff like that. Um, we also have uh, uh, meditation sessions, weekly pranayama, consciousness or mindfulness workshops, uh, partnering with other uh, specialists who do this, uh, bonsai, uh, outdoor yoga. So this, this, this is all the stuff we have grown in my garden. About, I have about 10 fruit trees and uh, must have grown over 100 different vegetables now. Uh, some rare heirloom and some exotic, uh, quite a colorful bunch. We have, you can see some black carrots, red corn, purple uh, lady's finger. Um, again, purple foods, you know, they have been popularized uh, in the nutrition circuits, high in uh, anthocyanins and may benefit uh, brain health and help lower uh, inflammation, uh, fight cancer and heart disease. Um, turnips, mulberry, Grapes, uh, what else? Baby onions, which, which has been braided. Uh, these are all homegrown. Um, again, uh, vegetables are of different varieties. Some are roots, some are flowers, some are fruits. Uh, so you need to kind of rotate them when you grow. Um, climbers, creepers, some of them need support. Trees take up a lot of soil area. Rhizomes need to be contained in pots. Uh, this is an orchid totem pole, and you can actually see some vanilla orchids growing in there, and some succulents with uh, affirmative messages. That, that's an aloe vera plant. Uh, it rarely flowers uh, once in two years or so. Uh, so basically, plenty of greens and herbs, and Indian cooking has always used a lot of leaves uh, in cooking. They are, they are rich in phytonutrients like uh, banana leaves have also have anti antibacterial properties, jackfruit leaves, lotus leaves, uh, turmeric leaves, also used in food packaging and uh, serving food or bundling food packages, uh, which are very eco-friendly also. Uh, I, I myself grow uh, turmeric and uh, basle leaves and kind of use them as non-stick liners for your steamed uh, idlis or uh, steamed cakes. Uh, there was this one time when we had a lot of pumpkins growing all over the place, and they even stole, there was a little terracotta Buddha in the garden. Uh, so we ended up giving a few to the hospital, even bananas. You can see my photographs in different phases. Uh, so we made new friends, giving it away to neighbors and a lot of other fruits. Uh, papaya leaves have medicinal value. They increase the platelet count. And uh, in uh, dengue fevers, a lot of our neighbors come and ask for these leaves. Uh, Gawa leaves can help you reduce uh, sugar levels. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, two mango trees and uh, I grow amla, pomegranate, coconut. So gardening is great to make new friends and you also get the vitamin D from sunlight and, uh, and good uh, back exercise from uh, the reading if you do it yourself. Plentiful of visitors, butterflies, bugs, cats, caterpillars. 
Um, my, my garden is pretty famous here in the city. Uh, I, I've been happily walking the talk without even realizing to spread the word of uh, growing food and eating healthy. Uh, it's just, uh, just doing my thing and the media loves it. I'm, I'm not trying to boast or promote, but I think it's ironically and unfortunately, you know, if, if a doctor has a garden, it makes, it make, it makes news. Um, so we have more vegetables. Uh, when in surplus, we also preserve them. Uh, we, we kind of sun dry them. You can see the pickles or the sauces. Uh, last year, uh, we did this with the Indian gooseberry and uh, lime fermented in the brine. Herbs, we can dry them or freeze them. Uh, I, I grow a lot of rosemary, parsley, celery, lemongrass. So these are great in Thai and uh, baking and soups. Um, one time we grew a lot of uh, ginger, turmeric, pepper. These are all annual crops. They come once in a year and they last me for more than a year. This uh, special process for turmeric. You boil them in, you boil it in water and then you air dry them. Um, so what's, what's your poison? Is that the question they ask, right? So I'll, I'll ask you, what, what's your Amrit? Um, Amrit is a Sanskrit derivative in uh, uh, it, it means uh, a portion for immortality. So what would you choose? Oh my God, I don't, of the drinks that you're showing, they look, I mean, they look beautiful. The one on the lower right is that the color just gets me. I would love that one. Yeah, yeah. Most of these are vegetable juices and I kind of combine them with the superfood. It could be microgreens or it could be turmeric or the purple color is from an Indian food it's called the jamun. Uh, or nearly hanu, and sometimes beetroot, uh, amla, spinach, uh, mint, basil, you know, so it's basically you're trying to combine uh, a vegetable juice, a lot, lots of vegetables, a little bit of fruit for the sweetness, and some uh, superfood in there, so that, that's the whole logic to be uh, juicing. And uh, cooking techniques, I think you are a pro in this, this is just my little attempt. Where uh, we're trying to bake fruit and uh, air fried snacks, uh, savory donuts, which are very typical to Indian cuisine. Um, more fresh homemade bakes, pizzas, and soups, all made with whole wheat flour, not uh, not uh, uh, you know maida or uh, all-purpose flour, uh, and no additives. Um, Again, this, this is our uh, guilt-free uh, grazing station: oats, uh, granola, nuts. Uh, almonds or uh, fox nuts. Fox nuts are basically lotus seeds, uh, makhana. It, it, lotus is the national flower of India. So these are again like fox, like popcorn and uh, you know, they're, they're delicious. You can flavor them and uh, use them. Most of the cookies were again made with the jaggery. Jaggery again um, is, uh, is a precursor to sugar. Uh, do you use uh, jaggery? Uh, you know, I don't. I'm completely sugar free. I only use fruit like dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that too these days, but uh, for myself, but when, when, when we make for the kids, you know, cookies and stuff, jaggery is much uh, better alternative and it also has more nutrients. It's not as refined as sugar. So uh, that's, that's the healthy uh, thing. Can, can you, I've never seen it. Can you get jaggery in the United States? Uh, I think you would, but you need to look in, in, in the Indian stores, absolutely, I think so, uh, but look for the sulfur-free kind, there is uh, a processing chemical which they use, so if you want to, if at all you want to use jaggery, you get two types, there's a liquid form and there's a, a molded, like a rock form, and there is a powdered form, which is essentially uh, powdered from the rock form, but uh, what you need to look for is going to be uh, uh, sulfur free, that's, that's the key component there. Uh, these are again some dry chutney powders, uh, great for travel, uh, basically uh, dry lentil mixes. Uh, again, copra, which is dry coconut, uh, the, the, that comes to me from my parents' garden, which is again organic. And the curry leaves are from mine. Um, more uh, air fried snacks, the charts, they're also healthy if you air fry them, uh, you can make them on your everyday basis. Uh, more food stuff. I put in a lot of food pictures because I was I was talking to a chef today. Uh, one of my very few uh, <laughs> set of slides where it's having all of food and colorful things. Uh, so we have baked samosas and uh, vegan uh, cake and you know uh, like date. That's a sweet again made ladoos with date and no sugar and no jaggery. 
so kind of very specific to the Indian uh, palate. Uh, uh, homemade uh, peanut butter, uh, crackers, uh, and, you know, and, and the pasta when all different people in the house have different needs, this is what we do. This, you get these dividers and the small pressure cooker. So everybody could choose what, what color type of pasta they want. Uh, I'm just showing to reiterate that it's been important to build skill power also to understand how to cook, not just willpower. So, you know, that's, that's what I wanted to show. So again, India, it's, it's, it's a famous uh, curry land, but uh, I think uh, the chutneys are healthier than the curries. That's why I put this. Um, typically made from uh, locally sourced fresh ingredients like uh, ginger, turmeric, and a lot of pulses, peanuts, and stuff. Um, so chutney in, in Sanskrit actually means to lick. It's, it's a flavorful dish, and the story goes that the 17th century uh, Mughal emperor, Shah Jahan, uh, he fell sick and he lost his taste and he asked his hakeems and the doctors to make him something spicy and full of flavor. Uh, so that's when this kind of uh, started. And there's a famous food historian here, uh, Pushpesh Pant. He, say, he says that uh, chutney is the coarse paste and it's possibly the oldest form of food prepared by man ever. So I think uh, that's uh, traditionally used quite a bit in uh, India. And uh, there was another context I read when I was just putting these slides together. Uh, in India, women somehow tend to eat after the entire family is fed. Uh, this also means that sometimes the lady has to sit, uh, be in a position where there's hardly any food left for them and consume, uh, you know, so it's a common phenomena, uh, po also possibly leading to malnutrition. Um, so that's when they would make these quick chutneys to have it go with uh, rice or roti uh, quickly. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, that, that, that's my family, my parents and my in-laws, uh, last Diwali. Uh, my father-in-law, he, he is 92. Last, last month, he, he, uh, he celebrated his birthday. And uh, recently he was sick. And when, when he was recovering, he asked me a very profound question. Uh, he, he said, you know, I've done everything right in my life, eat, exercise, pray, community service, why, why is this happening to me? Uh, and in his book, library of books, I, I have seen books on lifestyle and uh, healthy cooking oil and all, all the good stuff which we preach about. And he, I know he has practiced uh, diligently. And here I was at the age 49 with the HbA1c of 7.8. So now, now my motto is uh, be fit at 40, strong at 60, and independent at 90. So uh, yeah, another, another, another lesson which uh, uh, I thought I should uh, share. Um, now again, the, uh, the, the, the plate, uh, the main key lesson is the roti goes on your smaller triangle. So if you want to get a second roti, you need to fill the other sections too. Uh, so have a game plan for you to fill your plate right. And I would tell this to my patients, you know, you, you are like the CEO of your kitchen. You take responsibility and ownership of health of yourself and your family. It, it lies in your hands. So anything happening there needs to, whatever is going in and coming out, needs your approval at, at some level in some way. So you take control of the inventory. Um, you know, be, be, the, be the boss lady, if you will. Uh, with the iron fist or the iron tawa, that's what we use in, 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 in the Indian kitchen. So no nonsense or no nonstick. Um, customize, not, not everyone eats the same type of food, especially with the uh, family, with uh, different people in different phases of their life. Uh, everyone has different tastes. So bringing it together, customizing it uh, is very important. So what we do is we take turns, um, one week I find. Uh, we try to get everybody involved. Um, we've come, tried to come up with the family food policy of our own, uh, what is allowed and how frequently. For example, we order in maybe two meals in, in, in a week and we maybe limit highly processed foods to six packets in six months, perhaps, um, and rich desserts maybe only on family birthdays. Uh, you know, so basic, basic stuff like that. And I wanted to share this picture, what we did. We, we, have, we came up with the family scoring system, um, of, scoring it to about 10 points each. And we are four of us. 
So uh, anything about 28 passes, and if it doesn't, we come up with an alternative. Uh, we do this, I just put some pictures here. Uh, the study cards are like cheat sheets to plan, have you plan, what do you want to soak, what do you want to sprout? And the meal planning uh, magnetic board, that's the weekly menu plan, so you can actually remove it and uh, you know place it across and uh, play with it. Uh, top seven dishes in each category. The uh, for, for us, it's like idli, dosa, breakfast, um, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, the uh, garden crop rotation, which is also kind of season. In summer, we, we grow grout, and in uh, greens, we do it in winter. Uh, so, so, so kind of soaking and sprout rotation is, is important. And even your seeds, uh, I was just reading about this. Uh, they kind of recommend flax and uh, pumpkin seeds uh, because it balances the hormones in the first half of the uh, cycle, the menstrual cycle, the follicular phase. And uh, sesame seeds and sunflower seeds because they have the ligands and uh, they tend to reduce the estrogen on the second phase of the luteal phase. So um, kind of plan your stuff. We, we, we plan it this way. The soy sprouts go into the charts, the alfalfa into the salad. Horse gram goes into sambar, the chickpeas and the falafel into the uh, you know, falafel or the uh, uh, snacks. Um, these, these are kind of special trays and jars with these uh, porous uh, lids. Uh, I try to do microgreens in ceramic. It's foolproof every single week. That's, that's the Sunday thing that it gets done. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that that's, uh, brings me to my last slide here. Exercise itself can uh, increase insulin sensitivity and help you uh, lose weight um, and bring down sugar levels. So these are four things which I have done uh, during the corona. One is having a tall desk uh, where I can stand and work at least a part of the time. Uh, desk yoga, a uh, lot of poses and uh, you know, techniques out there. And this little, little, little gadget goes under my desk. I have one in my office and one at home uh, while, while watching television. You can just cycle and uh, get some movement in. And uh, a yoga mat. This was a special one which I ordered, but I think you can, uh, if you any regular mat, you can make these markings. It helps you get your postures right, you know, when you're doing yoga. So uh, that, that's something which helped me. And I thought I would uh, want to share that here. Um, so uh, I think I think uh, that's my that's that's my uh, last slide uh, here and uh, namaste, which which means uh, the the good in me, uh, respecting the good in you. So uh, thank you. Well, thank you. You know, I, I I love that you're doing cooking classes. How how are you doing them? Are, are, who's doing them, and who are the people that are attending them? Well, actually, uh, that too, just friends asking and, uh, you know, uh, more than a cooking class, it's more like a wellness session. Um, they, it's like for four hours or so, so they come in and we do hands-on uh, demos and show them, we take them in the garden, we pluck some herbs and make some juices and uh, kind of uh, get, get things involved. Uh, it, 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 we haven't done, maybe two or three times I've done just before Corona started and it's been specific to uh, uh, when, when, when my our own friends ask or they, they come up, you know, it's, it's been more like that. It's not more of a weekend project, if you will, uh, but not really a cooking class, but more of a structured uh, wellness, you know, what, what kind of uh, cookware to use, uh, where to buy, uh, how to process, you know, throw away your plastics, get things like, we start like that, uh, then show them how to grow microgreens and what kind of herbs grow away and what herbs can you use and which kind of dishes. Uh, we grow and bring some and do that and some juicing. Uh, more of a healthy kind of, I mean, this is what I've been doing, but now I am realizing, uh, you know, this is what it is. I mean, there's lifestyle medicine and uh, this whole thing, so uh, it will take a different course, I think, going forward. Yeah. I'm guessing as a nuclear medicine doctor, you, you run a lot of tests, but you don't necessarily see the patients over and over the same patients, so how are you enrolling them into this? Um, quite the contrary. We, we see patients, uh, as a physician, uh, in contrary to the radiologist, I see all my patients before we do the injection, so uh, there's a chance to interact and uh, we also do some basic tests like for example every patient who's undergoing a PET-CT scan is uh, getting their glucose level tested 
So quite frequently, we, we pick up cases of newly diagnosed diabetes. And uh, 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 before I talk about it in my book, that's how the book started, because many cancer patients ask me, why am I getting this? I, I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. I don't smoke. I'm 32 years. I'm inhaled and hearty, but there's no family history of cancer. Why am I getting this? And that's when, uh, when I started to do research and read up, and that's when you realize there is so much carcinogen burden in the environment, which we don't know about. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, that, that kind of realization comes in and uh, also gives us an opportunity to tell them, like just today morning, I had a patient who came in for a, a bone scan who has had uh, nails uh, put in his neck, cervical spondylitis, three years ago, now has body pain all over the place, and there is no clear diagnosis as to if there is sacroiliitis, a joint in the pelvis involved, or are they looking at fibromyalgia? So uh, I've, I've asked them to hold the report. I will be speaking to the patient and giving them an option to try vegan, you know, the bringing down the inflammatory responses in the body. Uh, uh, it, it puts me in a unique position because we are, we are already connected and interacting with specialists and there is a patient interaction and whatever learnings we can pass on and advice they can give, give them. And if it, if it helps them, why not? Definitely, there is a scope for that, I think. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that when you suggest dietary or lifestyle changes to your patients, they're generally receptive? Uh, it, it takes, I, I, I first understand what they are doing, how they are coming, where they come from, and uh, give the advice catered to that. If, if, it's, if it's a voracious meat eater and I tell him to go vegan, that's not going to happen overnight, right? So step by step, first, first it's the meat and, you know, it's kind of, and I do a lot of uh, diet counseling in my nuclear medicine practice. For example, when we do thyroid scans, we do low iodine diet. And when we do that, you know, pet scan, there's a lot of food and involved in imaging. So that comes naturally to me and we've been doing that. Uh, and we are also working with the local chef uh, who is coming up with, uh, for, for the book, which is coming up with this uh, recipe hack, very Indian uh, based, uh, very, you know, instead of this, you can use this and kind of things like that. So uh, uh, that's one thing I'm also looking forward to where we can work, make it easy for the patients to understand and make those quick choice changes in what, what they're doing. Instead of that, we we'll use this. You know, I think nuclear medicine is a field that not a lot of people are familiar with, but I remember I've been vegan for 44 years. And I remember before I was vegan, I actually had to have a nuclear medicine test and it involved eating an egg salad sandwich. And I'm wondering now, would there be options for me as a vegan to not have to do that? Yes, yes, absolutely. This is something we have tried in our uh, hospital. We, we, we kind of uh, do the idli or the dosa or even uh, dal, some kind of dals, which we uh, do. Uh, we used to do in, in I, I trained at uh, the UCLA uh, What's What VA program. And uh, uh, at that time we were using uh, egg, uh, you know, like a thing as the base to uh, mix it. But definitely there, there are uh, specific Indian for both solid and semi-solid. We, we have a lot of vegan choices, no issues there. Yeah. That's fantastic. Do you find that a lot of your uh, fellow physicians are becoming more interested in lifestyle medicine? And are you in any of the organizations, say like the Indian College of Lifestyle Medicine? Yes, yes. I'm a member for uh, lifestyle medicine. I also became a member for the American uh, College of uh, Lifestyle Medicine. Um, I, I think uh, I, in the book I'm writing, I'm also inviting participation uh, from the specialists. Like there are about 40 specialists, a uh, few surgeons, a uh, few you know, orthopedician, uh, gynecologists talking about menopause. They're contributing guest essays. So that was one way to uh, kind of work collaboratively and uh, get their input on uh, what they think about life to make it connect, you know. Uh, so. Uh, once it launches and once we have some program structure around it, I think eventually it's, it's going to take its own course. Yeah. Right. Does your does your family eat healthy with you? Uh, these days they do. Yeah, it's, it's not been easy, uh, but uh, they are catching on definitely. So I think the more you see, we, we every every weekend with Corona setting in, we've been watching a movie together, movie nights every week, and uh, for I think two months in a row, it's been all these documentaries, you know, for, for the, the entire uh, documentary series. Uh, so that's kind of brought in a lot of uh, the game changers. We watched the uh, folks overnight 
Uh, there's a whole long list of one after the other, uh, cowspiracy, uh, seaspiracy, uh, not a lot, I think, uh, or I think the hardest part has been milk and curd because, and cheese. Uh, we tried vegan cheeses. I make my own peanut curd now, and most of the Indian dishes which use uh, curd, uh, like uh, the manchke huli or the rawai, I, I've been using the peanut curd, and half of them could not even make out the difference. Uh, so, but uh, they can make out the difference, but not not to an extent where they're going to say no. Uh, I think it's, uh, each person has a percentage of uh, tolerance, so. Uh, but we've made uh, having salad uh, a compulsory thing now. We have a, a bowl at lunch and dinner. We juice every morning. So um, I think the, the, the more they get, the better taste they get without the sugar. Uh, even if you give them a little sweet now, it's, it's too sweet. But it's that kind of uh, thing. Yeah. So they think that the dairy could be the stumbling block for a lot of people in India when it comes yeah. to adopting yeah. a vegan diet. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that's... Uh, that's, uh, you know, you have it with your tea, you have it with your coffee, and it has to be, especially South Indian, we, we love our curd rice. Uh, and uh, I, I've, I've been working, uh, trying to help my mom, to, she, she's been a diabetic, so we've been, I've been trying to do the peanut curd and go give it to her and see, get the feedback and stuff, but uh, 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 we, we, instead of just sticking to rice with two items, we stick to doing uh, like one chapati and one rice and have you know, multiple accomplishments with that. So that, that helps also. I interviewed a, a plant-based nutritionist from India. She's on the show also this week. And she mentioned that the use of oil is it's very difficult to get people to decrease or even eliminate. Yeah, um, uh, especially if you have health, which I do in, 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 if, I, if I have a cook or something. Uh, so I kind of ration it. I, I hide the oil bottle in the other side so they don't get access to that. Uh, the whole concept is um, when I do, I don't use oil at all, even for the tatka or the seasonings, just a hot pan. It works perfectly fine. Um, even if you oil, oil the, uh, we use metal or iron pan, right? So oil the vessel, not the food. You know, that, that's kind of, especially if you're making dosas and stuff, it, it, it's the, uh, the oil is mainly for the utensil or the vessel that you're using and not so much for the food, uh, just to get the texture and you know, the nonstick effect of it. Uh, we've uh, we've uh, gotten into a lot of healthy baking, air frying. I think these are great alternatives. You cannot even make out, especially the Pani Puri Golgapa shells that you get. Air fryer is fantastic. Uh, I, yeah. oh, I love the air fryer. <laughs> I mean, why do you even have to uh, fry it? You don't get it. Uh, some of the puppets and some some things, yeah, you have to fry, but a little bit is okay. Once in a while, I think it's okay. Uh, baking is also very good. Uh, we uh, bake a lot of vegetables, which otherwise wouldn't get the crispy texture. So understanding these uh, alternative cooking techniques, once you get the hang of it and... Uh, uh, train your staff or train them to the extent where they can do and then take it take it over and then you you know it kind of uh, getting that going is the key I think yeah well it's just inspiring that so many doctors in India are are, are learning this and, and sharing it with their patients and their and their fellow doctors I love that your book is combining traditional medicine with ancient wisdom when can we look forward to this book a couple of publishers are looking at it, so hopefully by New Year's, I, I hope, I, I don't know. This is the first time I'm writing, so I don't know what the process is or what to expect out of it. Uh, but I'm happy that a uh, lot of specialists are contributing essays because uh, in one go, you can get a perspective of, you know, a heart surgeon, a brain surgeon. Everybody is talking about what they see. Uh, so that, that's been uh, quite... Uh, uh, enlightening to me also as a doctor, even I didn't know so many other specialties. <laughs> it, it, we're all in our own field, right? So it's, it's been uh, a very uh, learning journey for me, I would say. Yeah. Does the book have a title and will it be available in English? It is in English. Uh, we have a working title. Uh, I don't have the name, uh, final name yet. Uh, something in terms of like heal within or uh, something to do with reversing diseases uh, using lifestyle medicine. Uh, 
so basically I've structured it to give them some knowledge uh, of what is happening and some insight, uh, why it's happening, and maybe uh, some skills, how, how they can do things better, and uh, some fear factor of coming from the specialist, oh my gosh, all this can happen if I don't take care of myself now, so kind of leading it to that. And in the last few chapters, uh, it's even 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 uh, modern medicine has its own limitations, right? I mean, uh, I have personally seen uh, sometimes Ayurveda or acupuncture or acupressure or homeopathy work. It, 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 there are certain things it could be possibly the uh, placebo effect, but it it sometimes it isn't. It, it does work. So uh, correlations and. Uh, uh, essay contributions even from specialists outside the scope of modern medicine is is uh, they're all talking about what is really good what can top five things which ayurveda is good or top you know, things like that so it's a holistic uh, view of not just modern medicine but also other alternatives which could possibly work if, if you would want to give it a try you know, as I'm interviewing uh, these experts in India, I'm finding many people live in multi-generational households with both their parents and their children. And I'm curious, who has more resistance to healthy eating, the older generation or the younger generation? Yeah, uh, I think my parents were uh, very naturally uh, healthy eaters than, than uh, myself. Um, uh, my kids, I, I, they all have their tendencies. They, they have their own, uh, certain people like certain things. But uh, generally, I think uh, as a lady of the house, or you, you are taking some more control naturally. I mean, it's not that you know every, everybody has equal responsibilities. I have two boys, and I always encourage them to take turns and share, and uh, not to be biased in any way. But uh, they, uh, some people have sweet tooth. Some people like crunchy, savory things. So limit that in in its own sense. That that's what I try to. You don't have to be 100% off not eating it, but just limit it and know what you're taking and what you shouldn't be taking too much of. Kind of just being so very conscious about it. And definitely, and these days, all the Swiggy and all the delivery things have started. I think that is. Uh, <laughs> I, I was going to ask you about how, how prevalent processed food and fast food is. Because, yeah. you know, there are some people that like me that I can't moderate. Like, I can't have just a little. So it's easier for me to have yeah. more. Yeah, absolutely. And especially, it's so easily accessible. With the touch of the button of, on the phone, you have the food at your doorstep. And uh, uh, you, you have so many choices. There is no limit to choices. And once you buy it from outside, it's real. It's impossible to uh, control the quality of the food in terms of the fat they are using or the techniques they are using. So uh, we we put in a lot of effort to create those dishes at home. You know, learn trying to make Mediterranean cuisine at home or trying to make Italian dishes at home. Trying to uh, understand what each one likes and making those things at home in a healthier way. Uh, that's as much as we can. Yeah. Do you think the severity of the pandemic has made many people want to embrace healthier choices in their life? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I see people uh, now walking on the terraces. Uh, the, 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 some people try to overdo it. This immunity uh, drinks and the kind of, uh, that, that's also not been very good. They, they are seeing some side effects because of that. But I think that consciousness has definitely set in. Uh, it's been a game changer in itself. The mindset, you know, people have to look at it in a different way. Uh, they've had the time, one, because they were all busy in their own life. They didn't maybe have that much time to uh, focus on their health. And uh, uh, they, uh, especially walking, fitness, I see well, uh, the yoga practices, all of this has uh, come up, definitely. Okay. No. Do, you, do you personally enjoy cooking? I love to cook. Yes, I love to cook. Yeah. What What are your favorite I, things I, to I make? Love you maybe, but yeah, I, I do. I do uh, something which I enjoy. Yeah. What are your What are some of your favorite Indian dishes to make? Uh, Indian dishes. Uh, <laughs> what should I say? Typically, healthy healthy food is good. Um, I try to do kind of fusion. Uh, if, if we are making Chinese, I would probably add a little bit of uh, the Indian masala into it 
or uh, uh, today we made uh, pasta, we made noodles, you know, with zucchini, you can kind of uh, get those things. Uh, so that's what we made, and I am a little bit of uh, mixed, you know, Indian uh, peppers and stuff into that. So kind of fusion is my uh, favorite way to go, I, I would say. Yeah. I love chutney. I think chutney should be, It's. I wish it was more popular in the United States because you, you can't really buy it, you have to make it unless you go to an Indian store. Yeah. So basically pestos, uh, you know, I, I it is pesto. I mean, pesto is uh, herbs and it's fine nuts, it's nuts. So that's what we do. We we have coconut chutney, nut, nut. coconut is a nut. So you have coriander or you have tomato or whatever to it. And uh, you know, most, most of them are pestos uh, sauces. Uh, the best thing is you, you have some in the dry form, which is great to travel. Uh, I used to do this a lot I mean, when I was, uh, I, 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 I lived in LA for I think uh, 10, 12 years and uh, uh, I cannot eat a peanut butter sandwich without the chutney powder in it. I need that spice. So I didn't even realize that. Can you buy chutney powder? I didn't even know it existed. Yeah, you can. You, I'm sure the Indian grocery yeah. store. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check. I don't even know. You know, I live, I don't live in LA anymore, but I'm going to see if we have an Indian, uh, an Indian grocery store. That sounds good. You should come down to India. You should come and visit me here. <laughs> That's what everybody <laughs> says. That's what everybody's been so welcoming. If people want to connect with you or follow you, where, where, where do you most do most of your, do you use social media? How would people find out more about you until your book's out? Uh, I, I'm, I'm new to this, honestly. We, we have a, a YouTube channel where I've kept a, a collection of the videos which have been interviewed in the past. Uh, we have a website. Uh, I think that's also new. The book will most likely go there. Uh, we have this Facebook page where uh, people who have attended our workshops come and post their pictures and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think I would say the website for the book. Uh, if, if <laughs> Yeah. Fantastic. Any any closing thoughts you'd like to share with the audience? Um, I think I think I think uh, AJ, you're, you're doing great work. I'm I'm happy I was able to connect with you, and uh, uh, it also gave me an opportunity to uh, go do some research and connect everything together. Otherwise, you know, you just go on with your own uh, busy life. Um, so eat healthy, stay healthy, and it all starts in the kitchen. You know, you have to take control of what you make. I love that. That should be a t-shirt. It all starts in the kitchen. Take control of it. It's just, just such a pleasure getting to know you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous guest.